Hey guys, welcome to Lovecast the Podcast Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing Oxygen the Series. I'm your host Alexa and with me are my co-hosts Pixie and Kayla. Hey. Hi. Hello. So Oxygen is a 2020 Thai boys love series. It released on YouTube last year and all of the episodes are free to watch on the production company's official YouTube channel. And it is a story of Solo and Gui. Solo is a freshman music student and Gui is an engineering student. Can't have a BL drum without an engineering student. (laughs) And they meet via the cafe that Gui works at. They have an encounter one night and Gui kind of takes care of Solo. And that's what brings them together. The series is just pretty typical about their relationship and them coming together and the different factors that try and come between them and yeah it airs on youtube and 13 episodes you guys can watch them all for free Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so our general thoughts on oxygen i feel like overall i enjoyed this series Mm -hmm. but the reason why i didn't like it is because even though there's so many good things about it There's also a lot of outdated stereotypes and Mm. tropes that come Mm. into play that it just feels like there's no room for them anymore in BL. Like, for example, how the female representation goes down and just the whole storyline with the doctors and Kim, which I'm sure we'll get into more. (laughs) It's just, there are so many random things that I don't know, like it just, really rubbed me the wrong way but at Mm. the same time I was like overall it's good but still there's things that are holding it back basically that's my general thoughts I remember I thought it had it started off really good and it like my first thought of it was that it's super aesthetic like it's Mm -hmm. so pretty like the sets the the clothing, the, everything was just pretty and very mm-hmm. well done. But yeah, like you said, the the tropes in it, it's just unnecessary, especially the ones they added that aren't in the book. Mm-hmm. I didn't have high hopes for it because I tried to read the novel and I couldn't get through it. It, <laughs> it was, I'm sorry, it was so boring. <laughs> it was such a boring novel so i just couldn't get through it and that's just like a personal thing it's too slow paced for me and but the like when it aired it really like pushed my expectation higher because the first few episodes were so good but then it just went downhill to be honest (laughs) (laughs) but like i finished it like i got through it but I, at the end there, I almost didn't get through it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I really struggled. I feel the same way as Pixie. Like, I thought it started off really good. And I remember, like, saying in the Discord server, like, every week, like, wow, this show is so much better than I expected. And mm-hmm. then I feel like around, like, the halfway point, it kind of just, like, puttered out for me. And I stopped having any like motivation really like nothing was really bringing me back to it Mm -hmm. so like I I struggled to finish it for a while I almost I dropped it for like a couple weeks and then I think I ended up going back and kind of like speeding through it once it had finished airing but Mm. yeah I liked certain aspects of it like I did really like Solo and Gui and I really liked Pooh and Cow Mm -hmm. but I feel like the storyline after a certain point just didn't really bring anything and then like we mentioned the doctor storyline with Kim and that whole thing was just a mess that was really frustrating to watch and I I just felt like I wasn't enjoying it that much after a certain point and I I didn't really see a lot of reason to come back to it I kind of had to push myself to finish it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I feel like a lot of people found it boring or just Mm -hmm. like not not much happened which Mm -hmm. I definitely get I feel like I was at a certain point watching it just for Fu and Cow Mm storyline yeah I feel like that's what drove a lot of people in the end yeah but it's really unsatisfactory ending for them like you expect Mm -hmm. the sequel but there won't be a sequel because Ma uh, dropped 
the project. So if there's going to be a second one, it will be done by someone else. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. And you won't get the same cast because it's someone else doing it. So, like, is there a point even? <laughs> Yeah, we know how recasting series tends to yeah. go. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, overall, my general feeling about it is that, like, it just wasn't super memorable. Mm-hmm. I feel like with all the shows that we had in 2020 and all the time we had to, at least a lot of people had a lot of time because, you know, we were all at home all the time. It doesn't stick in my brain at all. Like, I'm struggling to, like, remember details and stuff like that because it just, like, wasn't super memorable to me. Like, I I know overall general feelings, but, like, beyond that, I'm just like, ah, I didn't really get anything from the show. Mm. Yeah, I think it not being memorable is (laughs) a good way to put it. But, yeah... I don't know if, no, we probably shouldn't get into that yet, but (laughs) (laughs) it just, I don't know. Like I liked it a lot more than I expected to also, Mm -hmm. but I, I don't know. I didn't read the novel, so I don't Mm -hmm. entirely know how it compared to that. And if it really was very boring, which I believe (laughs) then I've heard a lot of people say the same thing. So, but I don't know. I guess it makes sense that the series <laughs> was just kind of boring for a lot of people. Mm. All right. So what would you guys put your rating of this show on our one to five scale? I'm at a three. I feel like, okay, like it's, if you don't have anything else to watch, then you could check it out. It's not that bad, but yeah. Yeah. If, if you have anything else to watch, just watch that first. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think I would also give it a three because like Pixie said, it's really aesthetically pleasing. Mm. And if you just watch it for the way it looks and like the sound quality and camera and stuff, then it Mm. is really well made. But the storyline just isn't entirely there. Like there are a lot of conflicts that are introduced that are resolved so quickly or like never really resolved. Yeah. And then you're left wondering what the point of (laughs) certain things was at the end of the story. So yeah, Yeah. definitely a three. I think it is worth watching if you have free time, but Mm -hmm. don't go out of your way to watch it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I'm also sitting at a three. Like you guys said, it definitely does have its redeeming aspects. Um, the secondary couple, Pukau, being one of them. And I do think Solo and Gui were, for the most part, like a decent couple, if, you know, a bit on the boring side. But yeah, I think it was kind of just overshadowed by some of the unnecessary, like, stereotypes and and conflicts that they tried to bring in to create more drama. And I think that that just didn't have the effect that they wanted it to Mm -hmm. it ended up being more of a negative thing for the drama overall so yeah I would say meh it's a three it's not the worst Mm -hmm. thing I've seen but you know there's a lot better stuff out there Mm -hmm. all right so from here we are going to jump into our more detailed spoiler filled review of the series so if you're watching on YouTube and you want access to that you can find it over on our Patreon at the Lovecaster tier and above And be sure to comment what you thought of the series and if you have any recommendations for stuff you'd like to see us review in the future. All right, jumping into spoilers and details. Yes. Can I just say, like, the number one thing that annoyed me, the hell out of me, I kept, it kept bugging me every time it was brought up, was, like, the the disease that the girl has. Yeah, the, the lung disease. No what the f- what the <laughs> fuck? Honestly, it really makes no sense with her lifestyle. No, not at all. And like the symptoms she was having and everything, nothing like lined up with the actual disease. Yeah. And it's just, what is this? <laughs> yeah, that annoyed yeah. me. <laughs> I mean, we could get into the whole doctor's thing. (laughs) It just felt so tropey and, like, unnecessary, like you said. They 
have this character who I guess is the Fujishi character mm. trying to get she is convinced that Dr. Petch I believe likes mm. Dr. Perth mm. and so she's trying to get them together the whole time meanwhile the doctor likes her and it's yep. just like such a mess and then the other doctor basically ends up being alone and he's just like the gay yeah. character that is by himself in the end yeah and what the like he like, sort of like disappears from the whole story <laughs> like you barely see him he's on like the poster and everything so i'm like <laughs> what was the point there why is he even in the story if you're not gonna like use him yeah he got that poor porcupine doctor <laughs> yeah. i just wanted to take him out of there and like his poor his poor little heart was being used by like what's that other there's like another show oh history four they're doing the same thing where yes. they use the faking being in a bl relationship to yeah. try and get to the girl except yeah for... but they actually get together the guys right <laughs> so this one he was really just baiting the whole time yeah and then there was the whole weird thing with Kim's high school brother, who also yes. thought the doctor like had a crush on him <laughs> at some point. Yeah. And I was like, child, you're like 16. This man is like 30. What are you doing? Yes. <laughs> it made no sense. Like At the end, like the, when they tried to put the porcupine and the, the little brother <laughs> yeah. sort of together, mm -hmm. they like, what? What, what is happening? <laughs> Absolute <laughs> nonsense. No, oh like, my god! There was no indicator throughout that entire show that Kim's brother even liked the doctor, yeah. or even like was acknowledging him in any way. So it, that's what I mean when I say there were just so many random things thrown in that didn't need to be there. Yeah, yeah, and then you know the women in the show because then they also had like the girl who was supposed to be Solo's fiance or whatever. Mm -hmm. Both just like. It's the two stereotypical female character mm. and BL tropes. The weird Fujishi and the obnoxious ex-girlfriend slash fiance. And I'm mm -hmm. like, why are they even in this show? Please just, like, save the women from this show. <laughs> yeah. And, like, the way they portray, like, the Fujoshi here is, like, it's this is what is creating, giving Fujoshi a bad name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was, like, taking pictures of them and... Yeah, the tags on MDL is, they have Fujoshi in the tags on MDL, like, <laughs> just to bring it home yeah. that this is an obnoxious woman, like, taking pictures and filming men without their consent. Ugh, it's terrible. <laughs> it's really terrible. Yeah. I hate that they have to, like, portray a Fujoshi as, like, a woman who takes her private likes into the real world like we can like mm -hmm. voice love without going out and like trying to put two men together who yeah. like there's a line <laughs> yeah i think that's like one of the big problems with the way they always portray fujoshis in these bls is because mm. it's kind of like what we talked about with Ari, like you saying there's a line between like watching bl and reading bl and stuff like that but the women in these shows are always going after real life men and trying mm -hmm. to ship real life people that are just like existing in whatever universe this is in and like mm -hmm. talking real life people and stuff like that and I think that's what gives Fujoshi like such a bad rap is because like yeah. they're always going after real life people instead of just like being a BL fan that likes to watch dramas or something yeah. like that or read manga and stuff like that like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. they easily could have made her like a Sam type character Mm -hmm. where she's like this supportive friend but they just yeah. had to go all out with the fujishi thing oh yeah god and one thing like i was really it really bugged me was that the dad he <laughs> i i don't know what was going on there because it felt so out of place like you've been building up this relationship for such a long time and suddenly here's that <laughs> Yeah, and he I looks like he's fucking the same age as them. He's literally like <laughs> ten years older than Nut in real life. Like yeah. the guy who plays his dad is thirty nine, and Nut is twenty eight. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, looks like he could be like one of their friends. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it seemed like his dad 
got over them being in a relationship very quickly. Or I guess he wasn't against it in the first place. And he was just being, like, overprotective in a sense. But it still felt like he gave Guitar a a chance very easily. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, all they had to do was run away together. <laughs> and then yeah. he was like, okay, fine. Yeah, in the book, the dad is gay, too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, he's not a homophobe. That's not the issue here. But they did not explain the dad where the dad was coming from at all. Yeah, they really didn't. It was so random. And they really <laughs> just threw in, like, every stereotypical drama trope that they could find like disapproving dad <laughs> mm. fiance like all this like random stuff and we're just like yes this makes a good conflict except it yeah. didn't and my issue with the whole thing is that like it went from building up really slowly to suddenly going like ultra fast yeah yeah there were a lot of people talking about pacing there's a lot of in this show that doesn't make any sense and i (laughs) i had like when i saw the first episode and the second one i had such high hopes that this was gonna be good (laughs) but they let me down (laughs) yeah i really really did like it at first too like i was really enjoying watching it and like I I had been in like a pretty big like slump when it came to BL and I was like wow maybe this is the drama that will get me out of that slump because like I sped through like the first couple episodes and then it just like hit a wall and I was just like no this one isn't doing it for me mm. I mean it did have like its redeeming aspects like I did really like Solo and Gui as a couple and same with Pooh and Cow but like I just feel like that wasn't enough to carry the show mm-hmm. yeah did you think that Solo and Gui's relationship progressed very quickly? Because I know a lot of people thought that. Yeah, I think, yeah, because um, they got together pretty fast, I would say. Because I, I think, like, what was it, like, in the first six or seven episodes, mm. I don't usually mind when, like, the couples get together pretty fast. But I think, mm. like, that can be a problem if they don't have anything else to follow up on that with and I think that's like Mm. what happened here and I think it's like some VOs like take the whole series for the couple to get together Mm. and then some are more like this where they get together early on but then like I feel like if you're gonna have the pairing get together early on you need to have plot to follow up with that one and they didn't really have that here Mm -hmm. for me I don't really think they got together fast but I heard those people say that too and From my viewpoint, like, with my own experience, I met my boyfriend and we were living together, like, a couple, like, a a week, no, not a week, one month later, right? (laughs) And, Mm -hmm. And it took three months for him to decide to sell his house and in by six months he moved to my city and we've been together ever since. So... It depends on people. Like, some people like to take it slowly, and some people just, it just fits. I don't know how to describe it, but I never had a relationship like I had with my boyfriend right now before. So, when I met him, I kind of, everything just fit in place. And it didn't feel like it was rushed or anything. And, like, we've been together eight, nine years now. So, sometimes it's just, goes fast you know when you know (laughs) yeah yeah I really thought they were trying to pull off a love at first sight thing Mm -hmm. between them but maybe not I don't know I don't know if it says anything in the book like that yeah in the book you get the impression that Solo falls in love with him yeah just as he gives him the first cup of milk It was definitely, like, love at first sight for Solo, it seems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Gooey needed more more convincing, so he was... But he's, like, really clueless character to begin with, so Mm -hmm. he wouldn't have noticed. He just takes care of people. That's what he does. So it sort of came to a point where Gooey switched from just taking care of Solo, like he does with everyone else, to actually, like caring for him (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I honestly like 
typically when I'm watching dramas, like I prefer for the relationship to work progress more faster more faster that is not correct grammar (laughs) but like I am typically like not a fan of waiting until the last episode for a pairing to get together so like Mm -hmm. I feel like that's part of why I like this drama so much because I was like wow this is like moving very fast and I like this pacing and then they got together and the pacing just kind of like died and I think that's the second half of the drama is really when I started to have I mean aside from the doctor and them being there the whole time yeah the second half of the drama i think if the doctor storyline wasn't so bad it would have balanced it out better mm-hmm. but like yeah, i was I skipping so. most of the doctor scenes because they yeah, were same. horrible <laughs> same. <laughs> <laughs> so then you only have fu and cow left cow. Mm-hmm. yeah and i think like if they had a real couple to fill the spot but like the doctor couple was something that wasn't supposed to be there to begin with yeah they didn't need it yeah they didn't have to like they could have given more time for cow and Fu and just made their main story like nitrogen which is the sequel to ox- oxygen they could mm-hmm. have just put oxygen and nitrogen in the same series mm-hmm. and given them more time to really develop the whole thing I don't know. Yeah, I think that could have made it better. You know, one thing I do want to say that I appreciate about this series, or at least, like, with the casting, I appreciate that with Pooh, like, I don't know, we were talking earlier about how the typical casting for these dramas is always very, like, Thai, almost, like, Korean-looking, like, you know, Mm -hmm. there's, like, certain beauty standards that they have to fill, but I Mm -hmm. feel like with the casting of Pooh, they chose, like, a more realistic looking person and like a realistic yeah. body type because like he's not super tall thin mm-hmm. fit like he's like a thicker person and like yeah. it was nice to just see someone with like a more like normal body type as one of like the main roles in these series mm. so I just like because mm-hmm. whenever I see him on social media I was like this guy looks like like a regular he's like a normal body <laughs> and it's not <laughs> like yeah and it's just like really refreshing to see with him and I just like I do appreciate that mm. I was just like a random I was just like looking at his picture here on my drama list and I was like yeah that is something I appreciate about this show in the casting yeah I really liked him too I think they like he fit the role mm. very well so yeah I agree right, well I think that wraps up our review of Oxygen the series if you're listening to this on Patreon be sure to let us know what you thought of the series and Leave us any recommendations for what you'd like to see us review in the future. And we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.